Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. HBO just announced House of the Dragon Season 2, as we all probably expected. So I'll do my early top 10 predictions and explain what's going on with Season 2 just in general, because there have been a lot of questions about how they're going to plot out the show, like how many seasons is going to last. George R. R. Martin and the showrunners have talked about that, like how many seasons they have planned and what their plan is for after the events of this series. I'm in the middle of doing episode videos for House of the Dragon, and yes, of course, I will do episode videos for however many other spinoffs and prequel shows they do. Like, I'll be 90 years old someday doing videos for, like, the 20th Game of Thrones prequel series. But careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on the show so far. So starting with number 10, House of the Dragon Season 2 will begin probably with the assault of Harrenhal. What they might wind up doing is ending Season 1 with, like, the Black Council, because we see a version of that in the trailer. That actually could be from one of, like, the last episodes. Is sort of like the tipping point when the actual fighting starts to begin in the Dance of the Dragon Civil War, like when the actual battles really do begin. The cool thing about the assault on Harrenhal and a lot of the other battles, like pretty much all the major engagements during the actual Dance of the Dragons become really dark parallels for big fights that happened during Aegon's Conquest, and there were a lot of Easter eggs for Game of Thrones during Episode 1. The same thing continues throughout the rest of the series and all the different events, so like there'll be Easter eggs for stuff that happens way later in the timeline as well. Speaking of which, number 9, more of the characters will probably find out about Aegon's prophecy of A Song of Ice and Fire. There's already been a lot of people wondering if there's going to eventually be more of a direct connection with what's happening at the Wall in the events of the Dance of the Dragons, but that remains to be seen. Because during this part of the timeline, the White Walkers just were not very active. The way that George R. R. Martin explains it, though, is that like each new Targaryen king that would come along would be told the secret of A Song of Ice and Fire, Aegon's prophecy, but each brand new king believed that it was right around the corner. So, for example, Viserys has been king for about 9-10 years when the show picks up in present day. For that entire time, he's been completely preoccupied, kind of paranoid, that White Walkers could potentially attack at any moment. So think of all the crazy stuff that happens to him just during Episode 1. On top of all that, he's been kind of paranoid about White Walkers this whole time, too. And now, Rhaenyra kind of seems like she's going to be that way, too. Like, I know becoming queen, ruling over a kingdom, is a really big job. Everyone's going to try and kill you. But also, on the side, there's going to be this world-ending threat that you have to deal with, potentially at any moment. It could come at any moment. Because all the characters during this period didn't know that it wasn't going to happen for like another 200 plus years. They thought that it was going to happen right around the corner. Number 8, talk about more Game of Thrones Easter eggs. Viserys will probably die before the end of the season. Every season on Game of Thrones there was always some huge WTF episode right before the end of the season where either someone major or many major people died at the same time or there was some epic battle. Sometimes multiple battles. House of the Dragon is no different, and Viserys in the story, just like in the grand scheme of things during the Dance of the Dragons, is kind of like your Sean Bean, Ned Stark type of character. Destined to die because the actual dance is the battle over the succession, and you can't have an actual battle for the succession until there is nobody sitting on the Iron Throne. So metaphorically, he has to get off the Iron Throne by dying. If you look at him in all the trailers for future episodes, he doesn't look so hot, and not a whole bunch of time goes by. Like, there is a bit of a time jump, but not that much time. Number seven, currently the showrunners Miguel Sapochnik, Ryan Condal, and George R. R. Martin say that they have about four seasons planned. They might make it five seasons because five just sounds like a rounder number. And so much crazy stuff happens during the events that they're covering. But once you actually start the Dance of the Dragons war itself, the actual war only lasted for about three years. So it would be like season two is year one of the war, season three is year two, and season four is the last year of the war. And if they want to do five seasons, all they really need to do is just avoid speed running the really important parts of the story and give each of the major characters more time to develop their characters. Everybody having flashbacks to Game of Thrones season eight where Daenerys goes from like normal to crazy within like two or three episodes. Like, wait a minute, what happened? Why'd you speed run so much? We need like eight more episodes to explain how she gets to this place. Also, you have the idea of the actual aftermath of the Dance of the Dragons. Like, just because the actual battles, like the major battles had ended, didn't mean the actual war was over. There was still a lot of stuff that happened after that. Number six in the trailer, you see a group of young children later in the timeline. Two of them with white hair. Those are twin girls. They're Daemon's twin daughters, Bela and Reyna, with an older version of Lena Targaryen. And the two brunettes are Rhaenyra's children with Lena Valerion, Jacaris and Lucerys. And that's during season one we're talking about. And because of the time jumps, during season two, we'll probably see the older versions of the characters and their dragons, because all of them, all four of them here, become dragon riders. Number five, speaking of dragons, there are 17 total that they said they'd feature during the entire series. We'll probably see most of the rest of them by the end of season two. Maybe not like every single one, but most of the rest of them. 
Later on in the timeline, some of them are like brand new hatchlings during the Dance of the Dragons, so they're super tiny. In hand in hand with that, number four, we'll also meet most, if not all, the dragon seeds in season two that were part of the Dance of the Dragons. Dragon seeds are people who are dragon riders and have dragons. Like, there are a lot of people who are eventually born in the Targaryen family who have the gene for dragon riding, but don't bond with dragons, because either the powers that be won't let you have a dragon because of something you've done, or there's just not enough living dragons to go around. So there aren't, like, infinite dragons for every single person who is capable of riding a dragon. And remember, this is meant to be a Targaryen civil war with dragons fighting dragons in the air, so not all the dragons are going to survive. So eventually, the available pool of dragons to potentially bond with just gets smaller and smaller. Number three, we'll probably see an older version of Rhaenyra be married to Daemon Targaryen. Like, when they meet in episode one, Daemon is about 12 years older than her, and she's very young, so, like, they're not together together. He just really cares about her, but they try to let you know that there's just, like, this weird thing that the two of them have between them. Like, you're just kind of waiting for them to actually get together at some point. But currently, when the show begins, he is married to Rhea Royce, and his brother, the king, is very much alive, Rhaenyra's father, and he absolutely hates the idea, hates the idea of Daemon ever being with his daughter. So there's just a lot of roadblocks that have to get out of the way before the two of them actually get together for real. A lot of you have also asked, like, why doesn't younger Rhaenyra here just get married to Daemon if they do a lot of sister wiving in their family? Like, if it's a normal thing, why don't they just get married right now? Remember first, Damon is already married, but also Damon's brother, her father, hates the idea. But I think later in the trailer where you see him attack Damon with the Valyrian dagger, the cat's paws dagger, I think he's learned that Damon has secretly married to her, but that's like way later in the timeline. But like during other scenes where you see them bond their blood here, that is Rhaenyra and Damon getting married. Like we saw that in the very first teaser, so you know eventually they will get married, but it doesn't happen until way, way later. So if we saw it in the first teaser for season one, that means it's going to happen during season one. They'll enter season two, probably having been married for a good long while. And they'll probably have at least two of their children. Number two, just talking about the actual premiere, because they're not going to start filming season two till early fall, they probably won't be ready to air the episodes until like early 2024. They are going to start filming soon, so they could always rush things, but they either air season two at the very end of 2023 next year, or they just wait like a couple more months and drop season two, episode one in April, and go back to the old spring schedule the Game of Thrones episodes used to be on. So I think that's more likely right now. They might do something special next year, but I don't expect them to release season two next year. I will be doing bonus videos in the off season, and if we see anything cool while they're filming or they reveal any details about the premiere, I will include those in my bonus videos. And number one, I think they'll probably try to end season two on like the biggest WTF moment they can without speed running the plot. So that probably will either be the Civil War in the Riverlands, like there are a couple really big battles, and they also have the deaths of a couple really important people and some really epic backstabbing that goes on, like shocking Red Wedding level backstabbing. Or they could do that as like a season two, episode eight or episode nine, and then the finale would be like the aftermath of that. They've done that in previous Game of Thrones seasons before where like your craziest events happen just a couple episodes before the finale. And what they said that they're going to do, because they only have like four or five seasons planned, they have their ending in sight already. They know exactly how they're going to end the show, whatever the final season winds up being. The show will continue after that, but what they'll do is, like, the next season will treat like an anthology show, and they'll cover a different time period. So, like, if they go to five seasons, season six would be, like, Aegon's Conquest with a completely different cast during a different part of the timeline. And they do that for, like, four or five seasons, and then after that, jump to another part of the timeline. And what their plan is, is instead of creating, like, a whole different show, they'll just call it House of the Dragon for all these different time periods. That's, like, the overarching name of the show, like, American Horror Story. Westerosi Horror Story, Aegon's Conquest. So the actual show could go for like 12 plus seasons, like they could go as long as they want, just jumping around in the timeline, doing it anthology style. There are at least like seven other spin-offs and prequels that they have in the works right now, so not all of them will be House of the Dragon shows. It is always possible that they have a second show running at the same time that House of the Dragon is running in future seasons, but I think for right now, they just have plans to do one show at a time. What'll happen, because we're pretty early in the show right now when I'm posting this video, when the actual finale airs in several weeks, we've seen the whole show, I'll do a much more detailed predictions video for season two, like I used to do for each season of Game of Thrones. My full House of the Dragon episode two video will post later tonight, just like normal. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss it. Everyone click here for my episode two trailer video, and click here for my full House of the Dragon episode one video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.